bit of paint on paint there. That was seldom another Chris Andrew project. Chris, you've been around the artistic scene in Canberra for how long now? Ah, oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't don't keep score. I guess I've yeah. been um, making my living as an artist full time. I think for maybe eight years now. Yeah, seven years, eight years. Wow. And how was that jump into full time? Just like this is what you know, full time supporting yourself i don't know i'm still making it like it's obscene i, I don't know like it, it, it you really you really get a completely different answer from me uh, depending on you know when we intersect and you ask that question because it's um on the whole i love it and i'm really grateful to be able to do it uh but at but it is like fundamentally an unstable life which is fine i have a pretty high appetite for that but you know um you know i recently uh, got kicked out of the house I was living in, like, because the landlords were moving in. And I'd only been there for three months. And it's like, so you know, it's like when you move house, it's like a, a pain. And then, uh, you know, to do all that just a few months after, and I had all these other things on and work tasks and family problems. And, you know, uh, it sort of uh, uh, it, colli- it collided, uh, uh, threw me off orbit into like quite a dark way of thinking about it, where I th- was thought, well, you know what, you know, like, I feel like I make these things that are of value, but I don't sort of get anything of lasting value for myself. Like, you know, like even just tenancy stability, you know, I just want to have one room in a house, in a share house with other yeah. people. I can't, you know, that is that so hard to have? Um, and, uh, so, uh, so recently it's, I've been thinking, you know, or maybe I'll just join the army or like, become a banker so no, normally i don't think like that uh, normally it's really great but it, there are um significant trade-offs which are ones that i understand in making that decision but um yeah it would be nice no oh, sorry i'm not representing myself i love getting to make stuff for a living it's a choice i've actively made and i really i really appreciate being able to do it and i love the stuff that i've made and i would never um i never at all think about swapping back to my former life and for what was for your former life oh i was i was um you know, professional. I was, you know, getting paid to work in an office and getting paid very well. And, um, and I enjoyed the work. It was sort of complex and interesting. Uh, but, um, yeah, it was, it was not, not aligned at all with all the things that I want to do and, and my natural proclivity to explore stuff and want to share it. I can imagine some of the experiences you've had, in particular recording in Hungary. Yeah. Be, you definitely wouldn't be doing that as a Yeah, they're dreams. Yeah. They're dreams you can't buy, really. Yeah. Yeah, recording in Hungary was a tr- tremendous thing that I was l- lucky enough to be able to do last year, uh, thanks to some p- support from Arts ACT. Um, I mean, th- 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 they didn't uh, know I was going to go to Hungary to do it, but um, <laughs> uh, decided to go over there to be, you know, a bit isolated uh, and have a really immersive project. And um, yeah, I lived in a studio with Louis Montgomery and Charles Adigerge for a couple of weeks, and um, that's where all the the songs that are from this upcoming album. Uh, were really given shape. So how does that process work? You're you're in a studio recording. Do you have songs already planned that you want to record? Or um, yeah. So there were various stages. I, I'm pretty fluid in how I like to work, but uh, obviously, if you only ever find out amount of time and you're spending a lot of money to be in a space, you have to have to get some structure. So um, uh, Louis and I demoed maybe twenty, thirty songs, um, and then sort of. T- took the ones that, were, that felt like they were the most um, compelling, not not the most advanced, and um, over into the studio. And I would say overall the project was maybe somewhere 30 to 40% written or uh, it, we knew what it would look like and then the rest was sort of up for grabs and very much a, a product of the process, which is a really fun thing about uh, creative work for those who, who get to do it. You'll know exactly um, what I'm talking about. You really... Um, you you just have to sort of like give over and commit to a process, and you know the more the, you can consider what the process looks like and and guide things in that way. But um, it, it, certainly for this project, you know, we didn't there was there was there wasn't an end point that was like clear to us. It was most of it was about the journey of finding that, and because the dynamics were so good and so considered and so caring uh, to ourselves and each other and and the project and the work itself, um, I'd say we like the wastage of time in the studio was almost almost zero i think there was only one even only one line that we even like tried to chase that that didn't quite work in congruence with the rest everything's just sort of fell and landed like like clockwork it was it was it's it's sort of serene to explain it in that way you know it's, it feels like it's some sort of divine process but it was it was just um 
uh, I think from the experiences that we'd had from other projects and working with each other together, we knew what it would take to get um, good stuff out of each other. And I, I really think that we've got that. And I'm really excited to be starting to share that. That's awesome. Those works. So you've since come back and collaborated with Slow Turismo, Citizen K, Slagatha Christie, Excitingly as well, given what you mentioned about joining the army, the Australian Navy band. Oh yeah, so these these are, these are just um these are bands that some of the people that that we've the collaborators for the project uh, have been in. Yeah, in fact, I would say the best uh, artistic take, certainly including any of the ones that I put on the album, um from all of the sessions that we did was from a guy called Tom Duck, who's a saxophonist in the Australian Navy band. Beautiful jazz saxophonist, really beautiful man. And um, yeah, you just never know where things will come from. That's you just got to try things and yeah, yes. they land in the strangest places. So did you record those songs and then bring the yeah. in afterwards? Yeah. To- yeah. So obviously we couldn't take everyone to Hungary much as we would have liked to. Um, yeah. So it was just basically, <laughs> it was mostly just Louis and I, and then for half the time, um, also Chass- Chassie. Um, and, uh, yeah, from that we got probably, you know, 80 something percent of what the final product sounded like. And then, um, we did some, uh, auxiliary sessions here at Infidel Studio and at Mile Street Studio to, um, to get just some final parts. You know, we did, I, I, for the first time, I did some arrangements for strings and got some help from Slowy, from Chloe Sinclair, um, from House of Strangers to, to, to chart all that up and, um, and, you know, just, I don't know, just taking it to the next level. Louis, this part I had, I had put in sort of synth strings and I thought they sounded great. And Louis was like, we'll get real ones. I'm like, don't worry. It's so much, it's such an effort to, you know, book a studio and ask people to come and play and like work with, you know, charting stuff. And he said, trust me. And he was completely right. It was, it's blown it out of the water. It sounds great. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous. <laughs> and when can we hear these tracks? When yeah. Can- well, look. I, I'm in, I'm an independent artist, which means that I don't have, um, a team that I work with to, you know, have a strategy for release and things like that. I sort of have to direct everything myself. And, um, I was hoping to have the whole thing out, uh, before now, but Camp Eurovision was a lot more work than I had anticipated, which was silly because it was last year as well. Um, and so uh, I'm back in my schedule a bit and I'm just building now, like, um, it's hard to know what the optimal way to release music is, but I definitely know that I do want, like, if I just released it all now at once, then, you know, the people that listen to me would listen to it and sort of that'd be it. But I want people to hear, I want it, I really want it to build so that it can give it the work the best chance of being sort of heard wi- as widely as possible because I think it is really good and I, I really believe in it. So, um, so th- that doesn't give you an answer to your question. Uh, look, I'll have another song up pr- within a couple of months. I, I, I'm sure. And so awesome. any gigs coming up? Uh, yeah, I'm playing at the front on Thursday. Uh, um, it's it's part of a, a night that should be really special and warm and, and close. And then um, I'm doing Cambridge, I think the following... Oh, no, sorry, Shannon, I don't remember the date if you're listening. <laughs> um, Cambridge, I'm doing a Cambridge. You could just check that out on Facebook, check out the pun. Um, and then I'm playing uh, in support of uh, India Sweeney for her... Um, I think it's an album launch uh, at Transit Bar, and that's on I think on the twenty fifth of July. Um, geez, you, I, I don't carry <laughs> a calendar in yeah, my head. I just know I have stuff on. <laughs> all happening. Yeah, the Community Cup's coming up. That, that's going to be a good one. So the Community Cup is the annual game between musicians and football players and the media. Yep. And the media. Yep. So yep. Yeah. Um, it's a charity game for RecLink, and Two Double X very generously sponsored us, and. Um, went to do a broadcast of the first one and um yes very excited to be playing in that i was lucky enough to captain the musicians for the first two years and uh i don't know i might be doing it again i'm uh put the team together and uh we won those games i think the cup may even be here or if it's it's not here it's at joff's house (laughs) um and uh yeah that's that's a great day because there's lots of musicians that play the music as well as on the football field. And it's, you know, it's just a, a big romp for charity. I can so imagine. Get on down to it. It's on the 8th of September. So much fun. I'm looking forward to it. You're listening to Local and Live. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris. Thanks for having me. Great to have you in the studio. And after the news, we're going to be playing Andrew's song, Window. And we're just about to cross to the news. Thank you so much for joining us. We're we'll taking you up until 6 p.m. here on Local and Live, 2 x 98.3 FM, and streaming online, 2 x FM dot org dot a u